Welcome back to the Naked Hog Podcast, guys. Time for episode four. Today, okay. we are going to be talking about this giant box of yes. seeds. Yes, 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 for yes. those of you that are listening and you're not watching, uh, this is, I, I got a giant box of seeds here in front of me. I guess it's not a giant box, to be fair, it's, it's but it is a full <laughs> box. There's a good bit of seeds in here. This so we're going to be talking. This is most people order, I bet, or most people grow yeah, in their little yep. average backyard. So, um, so we're going to be going through kind of what we're planning planting now in the garden and in seed trays, and then give you guys a preview of kind of some of the stuff that we're going to be planting later on when things warm up a little bit. Right, right. We're yep. getting ready for that warm season. We are. We are. Now, you'll notice we are not drinking out of our normal <laughs> mugs, um, but we have these Yeti mugs. And the reason I mention that is because... <laughs> the reason I mention that is because... Uh, Jason over Cock Hill Farms, mm -hmm. he's going to have these same mugs uh, for sale here very shortly, and they will be branded with the Cog Hill logo. Right. And these things, if you guys have never uh, used these Yeti mugs in this water bottle, they are really, really mm -hmm. nice. Oh, I yeah. really like these. Really Super high nice. quality. Yeah. Um, and the branding isn't like some cheap branding that you're going to put in the dishwasher. It's going to wash off. It's no, actually, no, no. Uh, it, it, mm -hmm. it's actually very, very good quality. They are, uh, from what yes. I understand, the logo on it will have a lifetime warranty. Like mm -hmm. if it wears off, then for some reason, then you just send it back right. in and but you can get a replacement. To, you know, but it's really good, so it's um, probably going to stay. Uh, yeah, I don't stay see there, any yeah. reason that it would wear off. And the container you said is dishwasher safe. Yeah, but the, the container is a dishwasher lid, safe. Yep. You should probably hand wash the lid. It's plastic, but. The container yeah, and even the lids are heavy-duty plastic, so you yeah. could wash it in the dishwasher if you wanted. Mm -hmm. um, the water bottle here, uh, it's uh, for those of you listening, it's going to be kind of hard but to, to visualize maybe, but the water bottle is super good. It's mm -hmm. got an awesome lid that just pops right off um, and super easy to clean. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, the actual uh, the, the, um, the chug nozzle is what the Yeti chug people nozzle. call it. <laughs> it actually screws off for easy washing. Um, and screws back on, so really, really nice. Anyway, I don't want to go too far into it. Wide but. mug right here. I got the mug that I'm drinking out today. So we both have hot tea. Yeah, his. Is yeah, I actually do have hot tea in the yeah. water bottle. His but. is a water bottle, and mine's a, a, a tea or coffee mug. But I got hot tea going. But um, it definitely works to keep hot things hot and cold things cold. It really, really works. <laughs> yeah, it works really well. Uh, so anyway, mm -hmm. uh, be looking for that. Once I get a link to that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll put that down so you guys can either, I'm sure Jason will have the link on his videos as well, but yeah. um, I'm pretty excited about it. I'm oh, pretty yeah. excited. This, I'm, I'm looking it. forward to, to getting my, some more of these. It's my favorite mug already. Like, it yeah, really, is. really nice. It really, really nice. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, also, uh, I've got on my uh, Cog Hill Farm hat, really because I couldn't find my black naked <laughs> hog hat today, but uh, these are super comfy too, so you can get one of those too over at uh, so Cog Hill. On to the seeds. Yep, so on to the seeds. So before we get do dive kind of into the seeds, let's kind of talk about what we're using to plant them in. Oh, what do you think? Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah? All right. So we're using... We're using uh, the Haas Tools 162 cell trays. These trays have 162 cells in them. That's why they're called the 162 cell tray. They also have the same size trays uh, with smaller cells, and it's got three, uh, the 338 cell trays. Um, and so, these things are really, really, really nice. They are. It's um, a picture, if you will. Yeah, just it's these cells right here. So picture like, you know, half that size, like a little bitty cell. So that's, yep. and it's got uh, 338. 338, yeah. It's got yep. 338 of those, but it's the same yep. rectangle shape. It's the same size of this tray. It's just got more cells and smaller ones. Ooh, black tea is hot. It is so hot. Oh, I just scalded so my so taste buds good. off. Wash oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, wow. Anyway, so... Mm -hmm. um, when we yes. plant in these, we fill them full of dirt, uh, and we actually have a video that's that's coming out with us planting our tomato seeds, yes. but uh, we fill this full of dirt, and then we, well, fill it full of seed starting mix, mm -hmm. and then put little divots in them, mm -hmm. put the seeds in, and then we cover it in pearlite, right. and then wet it down. Mm -hmm. Now, there's actually a new method we're going to be using for starting seeds this time so for I'm, getting them to germinate. Yeah, I'm excited about this. We came up with a uh, repurpose something for a new use of a way to germinate our seeds because, yep. you know, some things are harder to germinate, like peppers. 
hard to germinate. So we yep. came up with a germination chamber. Yeah. So we'll kind of dive a little <laughs> deeper into what we're going to be doing when we get to the tomatoes and peppers while we're going through our seeds. Yeah. But that's coming up here today as mm -hmm. well. All right. So, um, you know what? Before we go into the seeds, because there's a lot of seeds. That is is there anything that you want to talk about that's going on right now on the farm? Anything happening? Mm -hmm current events well as we're saying current events uh today it started saturday morning but today mostly is when it occurred um we have had chicks hatching so we had the incubator <laughs> full of chicks and it's it's a barnyard mix and of course they're all straight run but um my daughter's going to be selling them for two dollars a chick so uh we already established that all of the you know mixed free barnyard mixes are going to be sold but also she put her uh, frizzle chickens, little eggs in there. She put about four <laughs> of them in there. We are keeping those. Was it just four or was it like six or eight of them? I think them? it was only four. <laughs> but any of the frizzle babies and they were, uh, she was bred by a silky rooster and a game bird. And yeah, and, and Nickel and, who and, and is Nickel, a, the game bird. yeah, some sort of game bird. So, you know, possibilities there, but we're going to have silky frizzle game bird babies, about four of them, and we're keeping all those. But the rest of them, they're up for so barring our mix and all of our breeds we have a uh, blue laced red wine dot we have a naked neck rooster we uh true blue mm. whiting um white leghorn buff rhode island red americana we just have so yeah many, so it's gonna be a mix so it's gonna be a real breeds, mix yeah. we have some olivegar uh olivegars that yeah. were in there that hatched mm -hmm. um so there were 36 we don't have a giant incubator but it holds 36 i think we filled it no does it hold 36 or 48 it holds i think up we didn't to, fill it right we, we didn't fill it but i no. think it holds up to 40 chicken eggs at a time we didn't quite fill it i think we got close to like 30 or maybe a little over 30 but yeah. um yeah didn't quite fill it, but it, we have a, you know, that's a pretty decent size mm -hmm. incubator, especially for, you know, a small homestead. So 40 chicks at a time, that's a hefty batch. <laughs> yeah, that's that's more than we need. So we have a batch of babies. That's our newest event. They started hatching on yep. Saturday, and they pretty much all, almost all popped out of their eggs today. They're all popping out like popcorn. So yep. Avery's excited. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, Avery's not the only one excited. Yeah. <laughs> Avery's been sitting staring at that. We did, we uh, incubator did. as they hatch just she she ate lunch over there she ate dinner over there the and someone <laughs> else has been sitting staring at the incubator someone I, was had snoozed that... off earlier <laughs> staring at it am i the only one that does chick watching i know bird watching is a thing we do chick watching we watch the incubator <laughs> and we literally watch them hatch and we watch them come out of the egg and i sit there and stare at the babies walking around in the incubator and i just i, I watch them dry off you know sit there for like two hours straight just chick watching am i the only one that does that <laughs> I don't think I'm crazy for chick watching. <laughs> Not well, I don't know. <laughs> crazy bird lady. <laughs> and then, then the other thing we kind of made a decision today. One of our does, uh, our mm. our uh, uh, Missy, our Kiko Sanin mix, yeah. came up limping this morning. I know she was laying down, but when we went out to milk and. Uh, the thing, the only thing I can venture to guess is that our Kiko buck has been breeding her to trying to breed her too much and she's not even really in season so she probably got injured trying to get away and he kept chasing her right um the thing is so yeah we didn't know this before we had gotten the kiko book about a year ago yeah we got him well, almost two years ago almost two years yeah. ago so we didn't know this before we had purchased him as a four month old buckling but now that we're here presently i recently came to understand that kikos will continue to breed mm -hmm. uh continually throughout the year just constantly so after they you know have done their job and they realize all the does are bred they back off for a short time but once they have their babies they try to just breed again mm -hmm. and breed again and breed again yep. and they don't actually have an off season they don't actually give the does any sort of a break and um sonnens only breed once a year they only have one yep. time that they come in they season, have a season in the fall and that's yep. it they only have one season a year kikos are not like that so we have sonnen does we have a sonnen mixed doe and a full blood sonnen doe and we have a kiko bug so he's thinking that he needs to breed and breed and breed and breed, and mm -hmm. they are not not down yeah. for that. <laughs> and now this is going to be pretty typical of all meat breed goats. They're all they they're year round breeders. They're going to have multiple uh, multiple kids kiddings a year if you allow them to. Yeah. Um, and most dairy breeds are the opposite. Not it's not a hundred percent, but most dairy breeds are really only going to come into heat uh, in the fall right they're once a year and they're mm -hmm. good and they're done 
Now, I wasn't sure, when we got to Kiko, uh, we didn't really know for sure that he was gonna do it all year round. We didn't know how he was gonna react. Mm -hmm. He's, Kikos are a meat breed, but sometimes they're also considered a multi-purpose breed, and we hadn't really done a lot of research on how often the Kikos would come into heat. All we knew is we had a Kiko San and mix, and she only comes into heat once a year. Right, and she was a really good doe, you know, so yep. that's why we leaned toward the Kiko breed, you yep. know, and such a hardy goat, and we yep. wanted yep. that in our in the kids that they would produce, and you know, we th thought it was a good idea at the time, but we've run yep. into a snag, and also the reason that uh, it leads us to believe that that's the reason that she's limping is because our other doe, about a week and a half, two weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, and I didn't even realize this. A week and a half, two weeks ago, she was kind of limping. And mm -hmm. I separated her out away from the buck for a few days, and she got better and she stopped limping. But um, now that our second doe started limping, I, we're realizing what the problem is. We're realizing yep. that they're just getting bred too often, and he's actually injuring them. So we have come to a decision. Yeah, we're going to sell Samson. Yep. He is, uh, he'll be two in June. So he's a two-year-old right. Kiko buck. And he does really well. He's super gentle. Oh, yeah. He's Don't get awesome. me wrong. We he's love sweet. him. He's, he's like super gentle. Baby. He's like a big dog. He yeah. loves, loves, loves it. He, we don't really have any problems in, in no, that he's, regard. He's it's just, just a buck. Yeah, he's it's just, just a he's buck. a normal meat goat buck that wants to breed all the time. And we don't really have the space. Or the facilities to, we just don't have the infrastructure to separate him off. Yeah, to make like a buck yeah. pen or a buck area that would don't require a lot of infrastructure. And we just don't have that right now. And yep. honestly, we're with that in mind that we know that now about the Kiko breed, we're just leaning more towards getting a dairy breed. Like yeah. I'm thinking about maybe a Sonnen buck or, or a Nubian. You know, a different kind of yep. buck. But he's a really good buck. There's nothing wrong with Samson. Like he said, he's just, he's sweet as he can he be. He does his job. And that's he for does sure. His job. He knows, we've he had knows plenty of job. kids. <laughs> He does his job well, and he's a proven buck, and he makes great, strong babies, and mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with his offspring, and he's a very good uh, proven buck that'll do his job really well for anybody that wants to buy him. So I think it's time for him to find another home with maybe a herd of does that are okay mm -hmm. with breeding multiple times a year. <laughs> yeah, or somewhere where they have the infrastructure where they keep right. the bucks separated off. Buck yeah. Then, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we're going to do. We're, we're going to sell him. We'll put him up for sale, and then... Uh, after we, after he's sold, when it, it'll be sad to see him go. I'll be yeah, sad because he's really sweet. He pees on himself a lot, but he's yeah. super sweet. Stinky, but he's yeah, so, stinky, so sweet. He's so sweet. <laughs> we might cry a little bit when, when but, somebody buys him. We yeah, might cry. And maybe. we got to make sure he, he's going to a good mm -hmm. home because we love Samson. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm also, though, excited. I'm excited to get a dairy buck. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. what we'll do is we're going to keep... Uh, we've decided since we're going to do this, we're going to go ahead and keep uh, Amelia's doling. And right, Amelia right. is our 100% Sonnen. And so her offspring is a half Kiko, half Sonnen. Mm -hmm. And Missy, who is half Kiko, half Sonnen, is great. Mm -hmm. She's a good milker. Mm -hmm. She's hearty. She doesn't have health problems. I absolutely love it. Right. Uh, it's just a good balance, so it's we'll keep that, her. Yeah, it's just that Amelia yeah. is a super milker. Like he said, she's full blood on in, so she gives like, uh, oh, if, if we took the baby off of her, we'd be getting like a gallon a day from this yeah, one day. Yeah, we get a gallon a day, yeah. Um, Missy, so, we get about three quarters of a gallon a yeah, day. Yeah, so yeah. keeping um, Amelia's baby, uh, which our daughter named her Sheep because she's so fuzzy yeah. and fluffy like a sheep. She's fuzzy. But her baby Sheep, um, <laughs> we're going to keep her doling because now we have that affords us the opportunity opportunity of keeping her daughter because as it is now we would have to sell all the dolings because mm -hmm. the father can't bring wanna, it back to yeah, his daughters we don't want to, yep, so we don't want to do any yep. inbreeding so but if we sell our buck we would be able to keep the doling and get mm -hmm. a new buck and yep. so that affords us a new opportunity there yep yep definitely so mm -hmm. then we'll have three goats so we get right three goats we're uh kid sharing so basically we separate the kids at night and then mm -hmm. we milk in the morning and then we let the kids on the mamas all day and we get a gallon of, well, we get over a gallon a day from the mm -hmm. two, from the two that we have milking Our once a day. Our is full of yeah. milk. Yeah, it's we, full of milk. we have four kids, but let me tell you, they don't go through a gallon a day of milk. Yeah, we can't keep so. up with that much. We have bought a few cheese making supplies and we're going to get into yep, making make cheese some. We're going to start soon. out with mozzarella and real then once soon. I get a cheese press, we'll venture into cheddar. Um, but, and that's going to be fun. I'm, yes. I'm excited yes. about that. I'm super excited about that. Um, but... 
yeah, so that's what's going on with the goat. So anything else we want to talk about before we press on? Uh, maybe the rain. It's been raining like yeah, crazy, I was guys. Say, those are all the animal oh updates. Oh my gosh! The rain is like killing our plans for the garden. The garden has just kind of come to a screeching halt here for a little while. We it just, has. Can't, yep. Just dodging the rain. And honestly, like our videos on our main channel have slacked off, but it's because. Our garden work has slacked off. Yeah. We haven't really been able to get a lot done out there. Uh, it has to be dry enough for us to make garden beds and to yeah. plant, and it just hasn't been that dry. We did get some kale planted the other day. You got some kale planted. Yeah. I say we, but you As, actually yeah, did the work. I had a few dry days, mm -hmm. and I took every advantage I yep. could of them. But, yeah, if we could just have, like, a solid week of no rain, it would, yeah. it would be on like Donkey Kong. It would, here. yeah, but, oh, man, it hasn't been. But, anyway, so let's move on to some seeds, guys. Well, All what right. What we can do for the garden is start our seed tree. Yes, yes, indeed. So, let's, we're not going to talk about tomatoes or peppers first. So, let's move those out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, those are the most exciting that I want oh, us I to talk about. I know. But, um, so, first, let's talk about some of this other stuff we have going on. All right, so uh, I did not organize this real well before I brought it out. Mm -hmm. So it's a little kind of all over the place, but. That's us, all over the place. Yeah, we are a little all mm -hmm. over the place. So kind of some of the stuff that we are going to be putting in the ground, um, these are not gonna be planted in trays. This is stuff that we're going to put straight in the ground and we're gonna do it here in the next week or two. Uh, we are going to be trying another round of carrots. We failed miserably Epically. at carrots Epically. this last time mm -hmm. miserably oh it was yeah that, that was pitiful. bad so we're gonna try another round it should be warm enough here by the end of the month uh, to get these in and have them germinate uh, I really think that'll be good so we're going to try again carrots one thing we have not mastered is carrots. Yeah. So try, not try even again. close try, so try, try, try. what we have is we have these are Yellowstone carrots uh, they're just a yellow carrot and then we have some purple elite carrots, the purple, yellow in the middle. Uh, these uh, have done really well for Travis and Jason. Yeah, uh, Travis over at Haas and I'm Jason jealous. at Cock Hill. Yeah, uh, Jason actually, he sent me a picture of his carrots today. Oh, that was Hell so Yeah, that was so I know, mean. right? And then we have this Olympus carrot. It's just an orange carrot. It's, um, these are all hybrids, uh, but they should do really, really well. This one's supposed to do really well. And all these are really good germination rates. You got 92% germ, 94% germination rate. And this one, uh, the Yellowstone's a 90% germination rate. So all these really, really well. They should do well. Can you tell we're determined to make carrots happen? We are going to make carrots happen, yes. Then another thing that we kind of failed miserably at. I wouldn't say quite as miserably as carrots. We did okay, but I feel like it was more the weather's fault. <laughs> <laughs> this was the That's weather's fault. That's what I was going to say. It was yeah, the weather. Yeah. So, Avenger spinach, uh, spinach. We planted, we tried two mm -hmm. rows of spinach, right? We, yeah. we tried yeah. once, and then we put another row in, right. and no, three, three times. Oh, yeah, there was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and they... <laughs> And they kind of germinated and came up. But... It started to come up and it started to grow, yeah. but then we got hit with that frost. It was just like every time we would plant a road, the temperature would drop or it'd yeah. be uh, yeah, or a washout would happen. It would rain so much that all the spinach seeds would get yep. washed away. And every time we tried, I really believe it was the weather's fault this time. It, it was it was the weather's fault. Yeah, yes, it was the weather. We're gonna yeah. go with that. We'll go with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're gonna try spinach again, another row of spinach. Mm -hmm. So do that. Then we have. Radishes, we're gonna put some more radishes in. These are actually, we didn't order more radishes, we just ordered bolt packs of radishes last right, time. Yeah. So we have this French breakfast radish, this watermelon radish, and Helios Golden. These all did really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm super impressed with the Helios Golden Radish. Yeah. It held in the ground for a oh, very I long know. time, mm -hmm. and the watermelon radish too, without getting pithy. Yeah. Um, the French breakfast radishes, they did really well, and they were really tasty when they, you roasted them. But they did get pithy, and they would get yeah. all hollow in the middle. So they come off yep. fast. Like, if you want a quick radish, go with that French yep. breakfast one. Yeah, super that, quick. That's going to come on See, you what's real it say? quick. 25 days. Real quick. 25 days for that one. The Helios Golden was just as quick, too. 25 days on that See, one, too. I don't know. I just feel like maybe no. it was just our, our soil or our area, but I feel like they didn't come on quite as fast as those French breakfast. Well, maybe not. The, those French... They were I, rocking. I, I think they, they we, were we were pulling the French breakfast radishes earlier because mm -hmm. the Helios Golden kind of grow more 
somewhere under the ground and these yeah. french breakfast radishes On stick an yeah, inch they, or two above the ground up, yeah. they got a white part down below and then they the red part is that's up right. above the ground that's and right. you see them yeah so i'm like oh we gotta fix that so and so fun guys if you, if you have kids and they want to plant something that's quick and easy and fun to go out and get out of the garden and pull it just let them try radishes you know just, yep. and yep. and give it a shot with eating them you know if you don't like radishes like i said try roasting them but even if you're someone who absolutely just won't eat radishes it's a really fun thing to grow <laughs> yeah it is it really is fun. now a couple other things these are kind of iffy i don't know for sure that we're going to put these in mm. um but we got the white egg turnips yep. and we did not we put those in again right before thanksgiving yeah. that frost hit the hail hit and I just think it just devastated them. Devastated them, yeah. So we're gonna try, we might try again on these white egg turnips. We'll see. Depends on space in the garden beds, if we can find a place for the them. The weather this year, guys, has been just up hanging. And down. It's been oh. holding us up and tripping us up at every turn, man. It was not like this yeah, last year. Yeah, you're talking, you know, cold, 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 and then mm. hot. 70 80 degree days and then ice cold again if it could just mellow out and give us a break i really yeah. feel like we could get and some rain of this all in between oh my goodness mm -mm. and then the other thing here uh this is the probably the last cold season seed that we might plant is this tat these tatsoi greens mm -hmm. uh the tatsoi we did we did do well with the tatsoi on the row that we had but it started to bolt so yeah. we are probably going to put in another row of that. I actually really like this tat soy. Yeah. I thought it was really good. Mm -hmm. So we'll put in another row of this tat soy as well. Uh, now some of the, oh, you know yeah. I lied. We have, yeah, we have another have thing. One more, one more. We have one more that we're gonna do. Guys, broccoli, we were rocking and oh, yeah. rolling with broccoli <laughs> this year. It was awesome. We sold tons yeah. of broccoli. And we've blanched and put away so much Yeah, we've probably, freezer. we've got 31 gallon Ziploc bags of broccoli frozen. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, oh, it's so much. Yeah. It's so much. Yeah. And then when you consider, uh, we also, we eat the stems as well, so mm -hmm. you peel them and grate them up, so we were doing that. Now, we did, we could not consume that many broccoli stems right. as we were processing it. Right. So mm -hmm. a lot of it, actually, a lot of the stems we also ended up, uh, we, if you, okay, let me, let me back up here. If you throw something to a chicken to eat, it will only eat it if it's yeah. easy to eat. It will yeah. not peck through a hard shell or anything. Mm -hmm. So a broccoli stem, it's not going to eat the broccoli. Right. Because if you just throw a hole out there, because yeah. it's too hard for it to get through. Chickens and ducks are actually yeah. more picky eaters than you think. You know, they'll give it a shot. They, but they don't yeah, want to work too hard. They don't want to work too hard. Yeah. So they're a little bit pickier than you might think. So yeah. you may have to like cook something up or cut something up or make yeah. it more palatable for them. And, so, then, and then they'll eat it. Yeah. So the broccoli, what we did is we took it, put mm -hmm. the stems in a food processor, ground it up. Chop it in. And then, so mm -hmm. the stuff, this is the broccoli stems that we didn't eat. We just ground it up and then we threw it out to the chickens and the ducks and yeah. some ducklings. Lily mm -hmm. has some khaki camel yeah, ducklings. Yeah, the ducklings love Yeah, love and they it. ate every bit of it after that. They <laughs> loved it. It was good. It was good. And I'm sure mm -hmm. it was good for their eggs. But these plants, they just, they all uh, made it. You know, they all mm -hmm. produced uh, the florets. Uh, every yep. one of them made a yeah, broccoli a good course. size head. And it was just more broccoli than I thought we were ever going to have. And it was, it was just mm -hmm. a lot and really good stuff. And yep. The, and the plant, once you've harvested, and then, yeah, if you want some of the stem in your food or, or for your animals, the whole plant, like the whole actually broccoli plant that's still in the ground, that's a green manure for your garden. We just, you know, pull that up or cut that, you know, at the ground level and leave it in your garden. It's going to get tilled back in, you know, or yep. it's going to become yep. Yep. part of your topsoil. Yep. So uh, I say all that to say that we actually, we actually, part of... Uh, the planting that Angie did the other day when mm -hmm. she was planting the kale, she also put in a couple more rows of broccoli that we had started before. And we've got three more packets of green magic broccoli that we're going to get in the seed trays and plant. Yeah. Um, now, I had been talking about stuff that's going in the ground, but this kind of rolls us into seed trays. Mm -hmm. These, this green magic broccoli is going to go in seed trays. The green magic broccoli, I know I've said that like five times in a row now, <laughs> green magic broccoli is a hybrid that is supposed to be more heat tolerant so moving into spring it's right. the only variety we're going to plant we had uh, a couple other varieties that we planted during the fall and winter but coming into spring we're only going to plant the green magic broccoli and that is because it's going to warm up and we don't want it to bolt or go to flower before the heads get big yeah. 
We're so. at the point now, especially, you know, anybody who lives in the South, we're at the point now to where coming on to the mid and end of February, you only want to plant things that are going to be more heat tolerant because yep. that heat is coming, guys. It's yep. coming. Yeah. And broccoli is 55 days to maturity. So you're talking two months out, so March, April. And April is not going to be 100 degrees, but it's going to be more warm than the broccoli is going to like. Warm, yeah. yeah, it's, it's yeah. going to be too warm for the broccoli. It'll be well, full, full on into spring. In, the, then, in yeah. theory, it's going to be warm. We'll see with this crazy weather we're <laughs> I know, having. right? Watch it snow right. in April or some weird stuff. So then we've got uh, basil. Basil, this is just Italian basil, nothing fancy about it, um, but it, we're going to, uh, well, we're not going to, Lily's going to plant yes. this. Lily is the our herb person. Herb person, our herbalist so, Lily, Lily's going to plant this basil and get some basil going. And who doesn't love basil? Guys? Yeah, who doesn't love basil? All right, now this I am really, really kind of excited about. <laughs> uh, these did amazing for us last spring. Oh. Oh These are Max oh, Pack goodness. Cucumbers, and you can yes. see I've got a ton of packs of these. I got five yes. packs of these Max Pack Cucumbers. I don't even know that I meant to order five, but we're going to plant all five. Oh, my God. These, I don't like we need them. Much. These things will produce <laughs> these, and produce and produce. So they just don't know when to quit. This I mean. Max Pack Cucumbers, they make a cucumber. You harvest it right about three to four inches long. Yeah, it's a little pickling cucumber. Yeah, thing. and they are so good. Even Miles would grab them and eat them out yeah. of the garden last year. And you will literally, like, clean them and, and like clean off the vines and pick them and harvest as much as you can everything that you think is is ripe or ready or even close to ready you'll harvest that morning uh your whole crop and then you come back that evening and you have an entire new crop to pick literally like in the same day i would harvest and about eight hours later i would have more cucumbers to yeah, harvest yeah it was crazy it just gave and gave and gave so we're gonna plant a bunch of these we only planted uh, I think we planted about 20 feet of them this last spring, and people were buying them like crazy. We were eating yeah. them like crazy. We pickled some, and we kind of we just kept running out because people were buying them all the time. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to make sure that we had enough this year. So we've got plenty, plenty this year. Uh, one, you space them uh, a foot apart. I've got one, oh two hundred, and we've got two hundred and fifty seeds here. Oh so if all of them germinate, oh we got about two hundred and fifty row feet of. Max oh, and cucumbers. see what I'm talking about last year. That was only one row. That was one. Not row. even a whole because our rows now are forty feet long. And so he's that was half about, a row. He's talking about how many seeds? <laughs> yeah, two hundred fifty. Oh yeah, two hundred and fifty row okay. feet. So that should be good. I'll One, two, three, four, five. I'll keep us good and busy. And then six. So we should have about six 40 foot rows of See, them. See, this is where we need to have a pig because they would take care of a lot of these. I don't, extra I don't think cucumbers. we'll need them. I don't think we'll have any extra. As much as people were buying them last mm. year. If you guys are looking to get into doing a market garden, I don't know how it is in y'all's area, but here. Everybody that came and bought pickles from us last or bought cucumbers from us last year said that they could not yeah. find pickling cucumbers anywhere. That, that was surprising. Yeah, they, yeah I was surprised. Uh, uh, a lot of yeah, our customers and people buying from us made that comment. They said that we were the only people that they could find locally anywhere, or you know, within X amount of radius that was even selling cucumbers. Yeah. And I thought surely somebody else growing cucumbers, but no, we seem to be the only one selling the pickling cucumbers. Yeah, but, that's but that's if, wild to me. If you can't get to them, like if you don't, you know, pick every day once they come on and start, you know, producing. If you can't get to them regularly and you let them go mm. for uh, like two days you know three at most you're going to notice these huge these huge honking huge, fat massive like cucumbers really that are just, so just yeah. hard and full of seeds and it's not yeah. good for pickles anymore yeah. so you're going to get a lot of those yeah. especially yeah. if you get busy and don't pick every day you're going to get a lot of those so those are great to throw to like pigs or cut chickens. up for chickens yeah, yeah. With ducks yeah. And chickens. the goats again, liked it we cut oh, up the goats, the goats. Like yeah, yeah they liked it too yeah again you're going to want to cut that up or slice it up for them because they're not going to eat it whole they're not going to work for it you got to cut it yeah. up so these yeah. yeah, I'm excited about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. All right, um, we got another one here. Lufa seeds. We did. We did not buy these seeds. A good friend of ours. Yeah. Uh, actually, the same person we've got the yeah. the cat yeah. Holly from, mm -hmm. and good friend of mine. She uh, gave us and the chickens. So she gave seeds. us some lupa seeds. We're gonna try to grow these. These are not the. Uh, these are not what they deem like the vine okra that you some of you have heard no, 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 Hostools no. talking about. Um, that is a loofah, but 
this is like the big, uh, big size loofah like that loofah you loofahs, actually use yeah. for loofahs. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're gonna try and grow these. We tried to grow a few last year, and we just didn't give them the right conditions. I don't think it was in the right spot. Um, so yeah, we'll try. Right conditions, try again. I'm, I'm gonna try again. I'm try, gonna try, try, try mm -hmm. again. Um, I think that's everything. What are these other big? Oh, that's right. Yeah, these need to come out too. All right. So. When in doubt, buy in bulk. Like if you. Yep. Plan on planting a lot of something, or if you think you're going to plant two rounds of it in the same year, or you know, two seasons of it, go ahead and buy in bulk. Like, just get the bulk. Back yeah. Out. Yep. So now we're moving into pole beans. So we've got uh, Kentucky, uh, the Kentucky Blue Pole Bean, mm -hmm. uh, which Haas actually just got back in stock. They had been out of them, I guess. That's I didn't right. realize till I heard on the video that they were back in stock. That's right. But uh, Kentucky Blue Pole Bean. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have the Momentum Bush Bean. So those are good. And Looking then, forward to crawling around on my hands and knees picking beans. Bush beans. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. She would rather pick pole beans, but I actually prefer the bush beans. I think they're easier to deal with. I so, like a bush bean better. Yeah, the pole so. beans. You're dealing in all the bush and the greenery and, and the bush beans. It's just all kind of right there usually. There's something about strapping on my little roux, my little baggy thing that hangs on me. And there's something about just wandering through the rows of pole beans yeah. and kicking. And yeah. but crawling around on my knees ain't, ain't the end of the world. It ain't no, too bad. No. But, you know. And then we're going to grow something new this year. We're going to do these Oriental Wonder Bean. Mm. This is a yard-long bean, so they should be... Uh, like 18 inches long. Um, they don't grow a yard long, but that's kind of the type of bean they are. Uh, Just a long bean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a long bean, and the reason we're growing these is because we're trying to kind of sell to some of the Asian market around here, and they like the long beans. That's right. what they want. And we've been told by some of them that it's really hard to get fresh, good produce at the Asian market. Right, so, it's hard to find locally yeah. here. So we're going to grow these out and hopefully they do well. We've talked before about how we're trying to appeal to different yep. cultures and different uh, people in our market. So uh, Hispanics and uh, Asians as well have uh, made certain requests for certain types of food that they like to eat in their diet. So we're trying to appeal to that. All right, so now let's run through our squash real quick. Let's see here. All right, so we've got in our summer squash here. We've got this slick pick squash. Uh, that should be super quick to come off. We're gonna, we'll get that in the ground. That's just a uh, yellow squash. It's kind of like a crook neck squash, but without the crook neck, it's actually right. pretty even. I mean, it looks like it's, uh, yeah. we didn't grow them last year, but I'm, I'm excited to try them this year. Yeah. But it looks pretty even, Pretty should be easy to cut up. I think that's up. actually one of my favorite things to harvest, actually, the squash. squash. Yeah. I like harvesting I squash. I agree. Yeah. By the end of the spring, I'm overeating it though. Yeah. By by time or really yeah. kind of midsummer, I'm done eating. You can squash. only eat so I'm much of it. it. Again, that's where like a pig or a chicken yep. or something will come in handy. If you have way too much of it with with squash, mm -hmm. you probably will have yep. way too much of it producing. But you'll be over it and sick of it, eating it and trying to preserve it or whatever. But it is so fun to harvest. Yep, it is. It is. Then we have this gentry squash. It's another crook neck variety. Mm -hmm. uh, Golden Delight Zucchini, which yes. is delicious. I actually prefer zucchini over squash. Yeah. And, and this Golden Delight Zucchini was one of the best I've had. It was really good. It was so really, good. really good. Especially the way you yeah. cook it. It was so it good. It was really good. <laughs> so good. All right. Then we've got uh, these Patapan varieties of squash. So we have mm -hmm. this Moonbeam squash. Uh, a lot of people, when they saw this, are they, you know, I'll send pictures to, to people sometimes when we're picking and harvesting or post it on Instagram. And a lot of people said this reminded them of, like, squash their, their mom or their grandma mm -hmm. would be growing. Oh, um, yeah. So... Uh, uh, older generations yeah. or old timers, they that's what they usually had in their garden. They grew that kind of squash. I just yeah, I remember yes. my, my great-grandfather growing that. Really? Yeah. So mm -hmm. anyway, so we're going to grow this moonbeam squash. We did grow this last year. Mm -hmm. It did really well. And it's pretty. Yeah, it's beautiful. Really pretty. Tastes mm -hmm. good, too. Um, this one we did not grow last year. This is the Total Eclipse squash. It is a patapan variety, which right. you can probably see, but it's green. It's a green patapan variety, and mm -hmm. it's uh, looks a little bigger. Like it's might be a little a wider. Size, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, this. Let's see. I think all these green are ones. Oh, here we go. Let's do this. This is. <laughs> hold on. Let's do. We'll do this one. This is the other patapan. So this is a partial eclipse squash. 
There's another Patapan variety. It looks pretty. That's why I picked it. There's really no reason. We did not grow this one last year, but it looked cool, and I thought it might sell. It's so, part, part white, part green. Yeah. You got some speckles of green on it. Yeah. That's why I got it, because I thought it might sell. It's pretty. Mm -hmm. um, same with this one, this green zebra zucchini. They just look different. I know. So Isn't that cool? I'm just trying to get some different stuff and, and try cool. some different yeah. stuff. So green zebra zucchini. Then we got this spineless zucchini, spineless mm -hmm. beauty zucchini. Mm -hmm. uh, it Solid is green. exactly like it says. If you guys haven't grown zucchini and squash, there's little spines on them a lot right, of times, especially right. the zucchini. Mm -hmm. So this is a spineless. A variety that's not mm -hmm. supposed to be so itchy and stuff when you go harvest right. it. So, it so like, yeah. yeah, so that'll be good. And then we have this Alexandria squash. I've never grown this. If you guys know about it, let us know in the comments. That I've cool. never tried <laughs> to grow any of this. That uh, looks really cool. It does. It looks like uh, I don't know. It looks kind of like a zucchini. I don't know. What do you think? It looks it's like. A I mean, a large, light yellow, light green kind of yeah. squash. I mean, it's it looks slick and pretty and yeah, yeah, yeah it does. That's it a does. Good so we'll see. Hopefully it's a good seller. I hope so. All right. So that covers our squash. Mm -hmm. Now we do have winter squash and that kind of gets into pumpkins, right, but right. we'll cover that in a different podcast because yeah. pumpkins are going to be we're, another thing entirely. Still, yeah. yeah. We're still kind of <laughs> sorting through what we're going to grow pumpkin wise. So we will sort through that. Um, let's see. Anything else in here? Uh, just this cantaloupe. So we've got this ambrosia cantaloupe. We're gonna try and grow that. Mm -hmm. We're probably gonna order a couple watermelons too. We haven't oh, yeah. ordered that yet, we are. but he we gotta pick some varieties. This, we yeah, are. we're gonna. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. are. Yeah, for sure. Now let's get more into some summer stuff. Uh, we have. Now we are gonna be growing corn, but I haven't ordered the corn yet. Anyway, corn's not really uh, one of those seeds that's gonna be in in, in a. In a state of shortage. We don't anticipate, I don't anticipate there, being there being a shortage, shortage on it. Yeah. So we will order it, but I haven't ordered it yet. Um, but okra, okra is something that we will not plant until it gets warm. Right. We will not make the mistake yes. of planting that. Last year, we got it started in seed trays and it did oh. really well in the seed trays. And it got all came up and germinated because we had it under a um, kind of like a in a hotbed type yeah, of thing. Yeah, we had it, we had it covered. warm and it yep. was great. And then we put it out in our garden a yep. little too soon. And it, it, the weather just did not get yeah, warm it wasn't, like it was supposed to. It, it wasn't like it was cold. We were talking, you know, nights in the, mm. you know, 50s and days in the 70s. But that was just not good okra, okra doesn't like that. That's okra wants enough. to be hot. Right. Not just warm. Okra wants to be hot. So we, we won't make yeah, that mistake we're gonna again. We're going to hold off until it's yeah. real hot around here. <laughs> So we got a bulk pack of this Silver Queen Okra because I really liked this. this we did get good. some off of this last sure. year, and I thought it was really good. It stayed tender. I really liked the Silver so Queen Okra. Okra is a must-have on our homestead. That's something that we just have to grow. That's something that I literally oh, just, yeah. I go through 100%. the garden, I pick it off the plant, and I just eat it raw. Like That's something yeah. I have to have. Yeah. I'm not as big a fan of eating it raw, but I love Okra. Mm -hmm. I cook Love cooking with okra. I love yeah. fried okra. I love it in gumbo. I love it in anything. It, okra is it's, just It's the good. South. We're okra people. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then we have this cowhorn okra. Never grown it, but it's a pretty standard variety that a lot of people grow, and it's supposed to get really long uh, without getting uh, real fibrous. So it's supposed to stay tender. So. so you ever see those bulls, those cows with those big long horns, big long horn bulls, you know? So yeah. Yeah, cow it's, horn over. Right. So, cow horn so we'll see. <laughs> we'll like see. A horns. lot of people love this variety mm -hmm. and I figure the nice long okra would be good for selling. Yes. A lot, I figure a lot of people will buy that. Good. So we got that, and we got this Jean orange okra. It's a pretty uh, okra. We've grown this That's for pretty. several years and love it. It's, it's tasty. It's really I good. like this mm -hmm. one. It's not a super slimy variety. It's a little yeah. less slimy than others, and it's just really, really good, and it's uh, hardy. It grows well. This was one that actually produced uh, one of the better producing ones last year. I love how people say slime or slimy. The mus mucinilage, is mm -hmm. that the right word? Mucinilage, the stuff inside. Of it. They call it Got slime, me. but it's not. It's not slime. <laughs> to me, <laughs> it's to, slimy. To me, it's not bad or. Slimy. It's not bad. No. It's, you know, I, I but would, for those people that it bothers. Yeah. This would be a better variety. Right. And Jing Orange, for those of you that care, is an heirloom variety, but. You know, uh, we've talked about in past videos on our main channel, our thoughts on heirloom right. versus hybrid, but we can go into that another time. But 
Uh, anyway, Jing Orange is a air, is an heirloom, and uh, it's it's delicious. Produces oh, yeah. doesn't really have a lot of issue. We've never had a lot of issues with it as far as diseases or pests. All right, so that covers our okra. I think we're ready to get into our tomatoes and peppers. <laughs> and there really is peppers. enough. <laughs> there's enough varieties of our tomatoes and peppers that we really needed to save them for right, last. Right. <laughs> All so, right. You know, so that's that's the main event, I guess you'd call it, because that's that's what people grow, right? Everybody that has a little backyard garden, they're going to be. I guarantee you, this spring and summer, they're going to be growing some tomatoes and some peppers. Mm -hmm. Yep, I agree. Mm. I agree. Let's see here. All right, so let's start kind of with our uh, uh, cherry style tomatoes, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, so we have, where'd the other one go? We got one more that's not here. I'll just have to mention it. because Oh, there it is. There's the seed packet. All right. Now you'll notice these seed packets are empty. Did you set a timer? Yes, I did. Okay. Right. Yeah, I did. Sorry. Um, now you'll notice these seed packets, you'll notice these seed packets are empty and that's because we already planted our right. tomatoes. So mm -hmm. again, that's a video coming up where we talk, where we kind of show how we did it. But uh, we have our yellow pear tomato. We've never grown these before, but they look really pretty. I think they'll sell, mm -hmm. and they should taste good. I mean, we've we've heard good things about them, so they should be good. I'm excited. I've never yeah. successfully grown any uh, pear tomatoes. Uh, yeah, I just I've never uh, really grown tried to grow any right. either. I don't and think. I'm I'm ready to taste yep. them. I'm I'm excited. Uh, the sun gold tomatoes we did grow last year, and they are a lot of them phenomenal. Oh, they're so again, so again, kids, good. If you have kids, grow these. Yes. Like, even if you don't even like tomatoes, mm. it is the sweetest, smell yeah. like a cherry. Super, it is super sweet. Sweetest one I've ever tasted. So citrusy sweet, and so they just pick it right off the vine and just mm. pop it. It's a burst in your mouth, and it's so, yeah. good. so, so good. So, so good. Um, even, like, it shows kind of three shades there. It has the yellow, mm -hmm. the, the little bit uh, more golden, and then the red. Mm-hmm. And all three stages, obviously it's sweeter the longer you wait, yeah. but even at the yellow stage, it is still sweet. It's yeah. really, really, it's like mm -hmm. just sugary goodness. Oh, so we, 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 we cooked with these. We can stop Jason stop. over Cockhill mm -hmm. Farms, yeah. he has a recipe that he yeah. had sent us, and I think it's posted on his website, thecockhillfarm.com. Sungold um, pasta. Yeah, sungold pasta. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So it's really, really good. I'll leave a link to it in the show notes. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, really good. Go, yeah. Mm. And you can use any tomatoes in it. it it's still a good recipe, mm -hmm. even without the, the sun golds. But uh, then we have this new variety that's new to Haas, uh, as well as us, Mountain Vineyard Tomato. Uh, this stuff has an awesome germination rate, 98%. Yeah. And they're supposed to be really good. They're kind of more like a grape tomato, a little bit bigger than a standard cherry tomato. Right. Uh, these... These here, the sun gold and the yellow pear are indeterminate varieties, and which means just means they're going to keep growing and keep growing and keep growing. So you need to have space for them. Right. But mm -hmm. the mountain vineyard is a semi indeterminate, which I'm hoping is a little bit better because the know, sun golds were really hard to manage last I've year. I've never grown a semi indeterminate yeah. tomato. <laughs> so we'll see how it does. I'm hoping what semi indeterminate means is it's going to stop growing once it gets so tall, right? And right. and it's just going to be done. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm hoping. We do prefer growing determinate tomatoes generally. Uh, it's just it's easier here in the south. Less, work, less yeah. maintenance, less work. And the problem is that in the south, once you get into really into the, the worst parts of summer, you, the humidity, the pest pressure, it's just, you know, the diseases, it, it gets so really get to bad. No matter what you do, that, it starts yeah, to take its toll on that It plant. does, it does. Yeah. All right, so now the one off we have here that's not just a normal tomato is a tomatillo, which of course is not a tomato. But it kind of falls into that same category. Never grown. So never had them. Nearby. But again, we're growing these to kind of try to sell to um, not the Asian market, but kinds of yeah, to the Hispanic that, market that and want see. That kind yeah. Of thing, yeah. yeah. And as well as us, I mean, I've never had a Tom Tio, but I know I like salsa verde, salsa. Salsa verde. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. I like that. So I know it should be good. We should, we'll, we'll find uses for it. Mm. All right, now into our tomatoes, our mm -hmm. actual, we talk about tomatoes, but into the rest of our tomatoes. Mm -hmm. So we've got this Tachi. This is going to be our Roma style tomato that we're growing for the year. The Tachi did really well for us last year, disease resistant. Um, That's your canning tomato right there. 
Yeah, so this one we will grow. We grew this actually alongside some uh, Roma 2s, I think they were called, we that we gotten Roma from. Two, yep. the, yeah, and these did definitely outperformed those. They did, uh, they yeah. did. We yeah. gave all the same same plot, same conditions, same everything, and, and the Tachi outperformed. Yep. They just yep. did really and well. And tasted better, too. Yeah. They were so yeah. good, so good. Mm -hmm. um, we have this Invincible Tomato. We've never grown this one, but invincible it's Invincible. Tomato. So. Invincible tomato. Why not, right? And I'm pretty sure I bought this one because I heard Travis mention it was supposed to be really good. Uh, but can't I can't confirm that, <laughs> can't but I think that's why I had picked it. But, I mean, Invincible Tomato. Right, right. It's got to oh, be, be good. It should be good. It's got to be should good. should be good. Uh, then we have another kind of one that did really well last mm -hmm. year for us, the yeah. Red Snapper. These got good, good size. To these are really a good size tomato. They were, to um, me, they were just symmetrically beautiful yeah. and round. They came out with these just yeah, perfectly really perfectly rounded, perfectly red, just a luscious looking tomato on the vine. They mm -hmm. were real pretty. And the flavor was phenomenal yeah. of these. I like these. These were one of my favorites last year. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have, uh, we'll do that one last. We do have the Bella Rosa. We grew these last year. Mm -hmm. uh, again, really just a, a solid tomato. You yeah. want to get a tomato seed that you know is going to perform well and mm -hmm. is going to give you delicious tomatoes and have a good disease package. The Bella Rosa is it. It's a good just go-to tomato. It right. was really good. Mm -hmm. Now, I like the flavor on the Red Snappers better last year, but yeah. the Bella Rosas were really good. Mm -hmm. What would um, you think? I think the, yeah, the flavor to me, just the, the Red Snapper had it by a little bit. It yep. wins that, but the um, Bella Rosa, I noticed like uh, the texture of it was really good. It was like it had all that mm -hmm. meatiness in it, you know, that the flesh yep. and the meatiness. It has great texture for a tomato. Mm. Yep, 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 you're right. You do. Mm -hmm. And then the last tomato variety here is the Florida 91. Now, it is supposed to be a heat-tolerant tomato, and it's supposed right. to set fruit farther into the summer and it's supposed to have a better disease package when it comes to heat and whatnot and so we need that in the south Lord we, knows we yeah we do so mm -hmm. i've never i've never grown this variety but I, it's a fairly common variety it's not anything out of the box and it's supposed to taste good so we'll find out we're gonna try it I mean, we'll see it's worth a shot yeah all right now moving now, on pepper. to peppers so i guess before we when we talk about peppers this is really kind of when we when we Decided to try a new way to germinate seeds. Peppers is really why. Last year we mi failed miserably at germinating peppers. We yeah. did get the one pepper that we consistently were able to germinate was a Santa Fe. It, even when nothing else would germinate, that thing would this did it. <laughs> did it. Just about all our Santa Fe's that we grew last year, they germinated with no problem. Bless his little heart, but, it was just... Chugging on. <laughs> and the Santa Fe pepper, it's a not a super spicy pepper. It's no, got a little bit of heat. I would call it somewhere between a mild and a medium. Yeah. It's not mild by any means, but it's not a medium. Uh, I mean, unless you ask our kid, my kids, they would tell you it's probably spicy, right. super spicy. Kids will say everything's but, spicy, but that's really not a hot. But no, it's not super it's hot. Not no, hot it's pepper. like between a mild and a medium. But really, really good. And like I said, it germinated for us. If you don't have heat mats or anything and you're going to start your peppers and you don't have, uh, you know, any uh, special conditions mm -hmm. to start them in, this one is one that you can grow and it's going to pretty much germinate for there you. you. Yep. Um, now, the rest of these, we're going to, let's talk about kind of how we're going to germinate our tomatoes and peppers this year. Okay. All right. So um, we're going to germinate the Santa Fe's the same way I'm about to tell you, but... Um, uh, this is kind of how we're changing it up this year. So basically, we are we planted um, we planted tomatoes. Of course, I told you. Um, and then tomorrow morning, we're going to get up and we're going to wrap the trays in saran wrap. So um, just to kind of start from the beginning of the process, fill the trays with dirt, wet the dirt, make the put the seeds in, cover it perlite, mm -hmm. water the seeds again. Make sure they're good and soaked. You want to make sure the soil is soaked all mm -hmm. the way through. There's water running out of the bottom of the tray. And then wrap them. Then wrap them in saran wrap. What that's going to do, that's going to hold in the moisture and that humidity, and it's going to keep those trays from drying out so that those seeds stay nice and moist. So None of that moisture escapes. Two things you're going to need with tomatoes and peppers. You want wet and you want heat. Yep. So... The heat part of that, we acquired a um, a pretty used chest freezer. It's still functional, 
But for now, we're not going to plug it in and use it as a freezer. Right. We uh, put a crock pot full of water in the bottom of it. And then we're gonna set these saran wrap seed trays on top of that and then close it. It's well insulated. So that crock pot will keep that freezer warm enough mm -hmm. that and humid enough right. that it'll provide the, should, should, quote unquote, provide the ideal yeah. conditions needed to germinate. So this is a test run. Yeah, we've never done it before, but we have yep. created this germination chamber. We repurposed the, the freezer. Uh, chest freezer and made our own germination chamber. We're going to see yep. how it works. So we kind of got this idea from uh, Greg over Hostels. Greg, I was up there visiting Greg and Travis uh, recently, and when I was up there, we got to talking about peppers and how hard it is to germinate. And Greg had mentioned that a lot of the commercial guys up there, they use an actual germination chamber, and That's they'll true. wrap their, That's they'll true. stack their trays high and wrap them in saran wrap, and then they put them in this germination chamber. And so this is kind of just a makeshift version of that, hopefully. That's right. Uh, so we'll see how well it works, but uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, make sure you subscribe and uh, yeah. keep on listening because we'll definitely let you know how it worked out for us. And ideally, once we see the first seeds start to germinate, mm -hmm. we'll pull those trays out. We'll put them on heat mats in the greenhouse and they should just keep on rolling. We're gonna try it with the tomatoes first, and then if those work out over the next couple weeks, we're gonna put these, we'll probably get these, I don't know, we may go ahead. I, don't know. I, think we I wanna wait uh, to see how well it yeah, works before we really put the peppers in there. I really think we should see how the tomatoes do before we do the yeah. peppers, because so, if this works out, guys, if this really is, is a good thing, we, we got something here. We, yeah, we so, yeah, definitely, I'm <laughs> hoping it works. We're using that forever more. So we'll put the, we'll see how the tomatoes do. Hopefully they should germinate a little bit faster than normal. Mm -hmm. Tomatoes generally are gonna take 10 days to two weeks to germinate. Hopefully they should germinate in uh, you know a week or so maybe we'll I don't know. It. We'll check it in a week and see yeah. what they're doing. So the minute they like I said the minute they start to germinate and pop up we will get them out of there. All right, so now let's wrap this up and talk kind of about our peppers. Peppers. What varieties? So we already showed you the Santa Fe. Um, now we're not real big bell pepper fans, but. You guys know we got a market garden and we're trying to sell, and other people want to eat bell peppers. Don't I don't know why. Like. We grow what but, everybody wants. But to some people do like bell peppers. Right. Oh. But so we have this uh, touchdown bell pepper. Uh, it should be a good one. It's a hybrid. It's got a good disease package. What's funny is bell peppers are actually my favorite pepper to grow. I don't eat them. I don't, I don't really like weird. them. I, I don't like them all that much, and I hardly Ugh. eat them in anything. But I yeah. love to grow bell peppers. Really yeah. Strange. Well, yeah. you're gonna love growing those then. <laughs> uh, then we have our just a kind of a couple varieties of banana peppers. This is the Gold Rush banana pepper, and then we have the Lola banana pepper. And nothing really that I know special about them, but these are the varieties that I saw on Haas that look good and kind of the name appealed to me, so right. we got them. So yeah. uh, they should be good. Banana peppers are beautiful, yep. especially when they start changing colors. They're just, oh they're yeah, pretty. yeah. So definitely. Pretty. Uh, then we have some of these Greek peppercini uh, peppers, and really I got these. We're gonna we'll sell these, but I kind of just want to make uh, Pepp some vinegar yeah. with them. Pepperoncini. Pepperoncini, yeah. Pepper, Pepperoncini. Pepperoncini. Yeah, pepperoncini. <laughs> they, like when you go to Papa John's, they give you a pepperoncini, pepperoncini. a pepperoncini <laughs> with your uh, pizza. Okay. Yeah. So we'll put these in vinegar, and uh, these will be delicious. All right. Yeah. I, that, we'll sell some, I'm sure, but that, I got those for us, really. For me. For me. <laughs> Another a couple bell peppers. We have this Merlot oh, purple that, bell pepper. That's really pretty. pretty. Yeah. That's a pretty brown bell Beautiful. Pepper. Yeah. Oh, Look pretty. at that. It's, it's almost purple, oh, black. Yeah. Like, Oh, yeah. Ooh, Merlot is a good description of it. Yes. Merlot, about the color. Then we have these chocolate beauty peppers. Uh, uh, looks like another it's bell like a reddish variety. Brown. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really, really good. Really good looking. Uh, these Mama are really Mia. good. I like these. Mama these Mia are the Mamma Mia Rosa peppers. And these are really, really good. Mm -hmm. These are good just to, to eat. I think these are the ones that got real big that we stuffed. Yeah. Um, the good I can't remember. I think pepper, this is, yeah, yeah I think get, so. Uh, sizable, yeah. These were really, really good. Mm -hmm. I liked these. These are just a good sweet pepper. Uh, then we have just some standard cayenne, the long slim cayenne peppers. Mm -hmm. These are just really good for drying, and we, say, we grind, grind it. it up. We yeah. do a lot of cayenne powder. Yep. We grind yep. them up. Yep. And I use cayenne 
pretty much daily. Uh, Lily uses it <laughs> in some of her. It's so yeah, good. it it's is. Healthy. And Lily uses it in some of her herbal remedies and things like that. That's but great. I use it just on my food. I just like cayenne pepper. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is just a good, nice, spicy, you know, go-to pepper. Mm -hmm. Anaheim's another one that's just really, really good. I love cooking with Anaheim's. Anaheim's are a nice, uh, just a medium pepper. Mm -hmm. Really, really, really delicious. I right. love, love these mm -hmm. Anaheim's. Anaheim's are good. Then here's another, here's a variety that we're not real familiar with. I've never grown. Um, this is the Durango Guajillo pepper. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna try this. It's supposed to be good. I read good things about it, but I don't know. We I, haven't I, tried it. I've never grown so, it, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, we will see. It looks really pretty. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try it. If you guys know anything about the guajillo peppers, let us know. Cinder jalapeno. jalapeno. Yeah, just a, this is just kind of a standard jalapeno. Jalapeno. You got to have your jalapenos. So. Yeah, so uh, we're going to grow that. They should sell. That's the biggest thing we're getting them for is a the sell, mm -hmm. though we do cook with jalapenos sometimes. I like them. Uh, again, getting the kids on board with spicy is hard sometimes. Mm. Uh, getting my wife on board with mm. super spicy is hard I sometimes. I can do a little spicy. I like a little, <laughs> little bit of heat, a little bit of a kick. I cannot do that burn your face off heat, you know. Yeah. But, uh, like we can get the kids yep. to go with some of that as long as you have a big mm -hmm. glass of milk with you, you're good. Yep. And then we have Serranos. Serranos are another, um, here I got the Santa Fe there with it. There you go. Serranos, Serranos, those are another good spicy pepper. They're small. Be careful with the they're Serranos. Spicy. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're getting up there. They're, they're, I don't know if they're, they're not like super hot, but they are spicy. And they look if too you, much heat for me. <laughs> so quick story, I did cut up some Serranos one time and didn't think about it. And I went to bed. Obviously, I'd washed my hands since then. I took my contacts out, put them away. No, no thought to it. He went to thinking. put my contacts in the next day. I put that contact in my eye, and oh my goodness! And he it remembered the peppers. Burned. Oh, <laughs> it suddenly man. came to his mind why his eyes were on fire. Ooh. It came to his mind quick. Mm, yeah, <laughs> these were hot, spicy peppers. Then that was kind of funny. If you, Ooh, if you, if you never, man. if you've never put milk in your eye. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you're missing out. You will after that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was rough. That was rough. oh man, I had to throw those contacts away. So then we have this Tiburon Poblano pepper. Poblanos are really really good. They are. I love Poblanos, and Poblanos also uh, are the same thing as say an ancho. An ancho chili has just been dried. Mm -hmm. I think maybe smoked, but I don't think it has to be smoked. Mm -hmm. I think it's just dried. But, but that's what ancho. So like, when you go to the store and you buy dried ancho chilies, it's a poblano pepper. That's but you've been done the poblanos. You've roasted them and smoked them, and they just so oh yeah, good. so good. Yeah, so good. I love. So when we cook with the poblanos, a lot of times I'll put it in chili, and I'll go out and I'll just roast it on the grill real quick over real high heat. Gives it a different flavor. Yeah, it gives it a smoky roasted mm -hmm. pepper flavor, and it's and so, so that good. also when you roast it like that. You take it off the grill, throw it into a paper bag real quick. I don't know if you know how to do this, but uh -uh. take the pepper off, throw it into a paper bag, and close it up real tight. Let it sit for five minutes and cool off. And then you take it out, and the skin just what? flakes right off of it. Does it so, really? yeah. And then you just cut it up. You just have your pepper without the skin on it, and yeah. really good. I know. Look out. The things okay. I know how to do. I know, right? Crazy. Master chef. Now, the other seeds that we don't have yet that we're working on sourcing, uh, I think Travis over Haas Tools is supposed to get some, yes. is uh, some ha habanero peppers we're going to get. Yeah. And then I've got to find a source for some ghost peppers oh, yeah. or some Carolina Reapers, something, something uh, yeah. super, like super spicy. Yeah. So again, we don't eat them. It's not going to be for our family. It's going to be for selling for the people who've yep. requested it or people who like that sort of thing or have that in their diet. But yep. I don't know. I think maybe we should eat some on the podcast no, and try to get through a podcast. I will not That'd be a good that. podcast episode. I Kind of like, uh, yeah. We just, we, we lay out some peppers, right? And then we just eat, move from bell to, to ghost pepper through the through the podcast. See you how long it takes us to that, get through baby. it. You have fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be standing by with the fire hose and the milk and all that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. So that kind of gets us through all our seeds that we're planting. There's going to be some more stuff that yeah. you'll see come along that we just decide last minute to get. But uh, for the most part, that's what we have going on with what we're planting now and relatively soon. Lots and yeah. lots. 
Lots Let's of planting. See. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's exciting. So fun, oh, yeah. I love I love uh, going into spring and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. The thing about squash, you know, I, you get tired of eating it, but it's so fun to watch oh, it grow. Yeah. You uh, put the seed in, and it pops up so quick. It's like the best thing to grow and harvest yeah, in squash. Yeah, so good. Now, I don't know. Broccoli was really fun to, fun to harvest, And the winter too. has been good, and the yeah. cold season was great, and we loved it, and everybody loves the holidays and the Christmas time and all the cold weather food that we grew, and it was awesome, yep. but we've come to the point now where we are ready for spring. Yeah, ready. ready. I'm ready for the wet I'm to ready be gone. For oh, the winter you know what? One more gone. thing. Let me grab. One more thing I didn't talk about. Okay. Um, let's see here. One more thing. And we may do just a whole episode on this. And they say everything has a season, and that is the truth, folks. Everything in its own season, because right about the time it's time for the season to end, you're ready for it to end. You're ready to move into the other season, so, yeah. What you digging for back there? What you digging for? Yeah. Oh, um, potatoes. Yeah, potatoes. Now, potatoes. I only, I only pulled out one of the varieties. This is the Kennebec White. We have two varieties of potatoes we're going to be planting this year, the Kennebec Whites and the... Red ones. The red ones, I don't remember which variety it was. I can't so, remember the name. It's uh, little red ones. <laughs> yeah, the red potatoes. I don't remember what variety of red it was. But we will, you know what, next podcast we'll talk about potatoes because we're getting yeah. time to close close yeah. to time to plant them. So next podcast we'll talk about potatoes. That'll be what we'll do. We um, but basically, anyway, we'll go into the next episode. But potatoes, we're getting in the ground the next couple of weeks. So that's the other thing we're planting, not really a seed, but they are well, seed potatoes. if the weather cooperates. We'll if the weather cooperates, the yeah. Weeks. But we'll, either way, we'll talk about it. Yeah. So, all right. Thank you guys for, for listening. And thank you guys that are on the channel watching. Uh, we really appreciate it. If you guys would, uh, please share our videos and our yeah, podcast, uh, the audio episodes, if you're listening. Uh, that is probably the greatest way you could help us out is by sharing that. That would be awesome. We would love it. Please let us know your feedback. And thank you guys. Thanks again. Thanks, we will catch you guys in the next episode. Bye, guys.